Hello, uh, my name is Alan Williams. I'm uh, the chef proprietor of Alan Williams at Westbury. I'm going to show you basically how to take the meat off of the bone, uh, what I do with some of the fat, and also how to tie the meat before we roast it. So the first thing that I do is take this first top piece of fat off. This is what is called the chain. I'm not going to roast that, but I am going to use this. Uh, following that, I take the meat off of the bone simply with a sharp knife following the ribs until you get to that base bone again there. You can either turn the meat over and go back round again, or you can pull the, the meat away from the bone there and simply run your knife again just down the bottom pushing the meat away from you as you go. So there we have the bone. That's the uh, connective meat in between the, in, in between the ribs and then we have the sirloin. What I'm gonna do is just take off a little bit of this fat here. You've also got connective tissue. This doesn't break down in the cooking. Um, so I'm just gonna run my knife along here and strim that off. That, I will use all of these little bits and pieces in a sauce. I put the string underneath the, the meat like that, just at the end, about a half an inch from the end of the meat. And what you do is you, you need to hold your, the string in your hand. The second piece of string goes around your fingers, like so. And when you get back to this position, it crosses the first piece of string, and then you pull it through the loop, and that then gives you a slip knot. You pull the slip knot down, tie it onto the, onto the piece of meat, like this, and then secure it by making another loop, just pulling a knot. Cut off any excess there. Then you're gonna turn your meat around so that the top of the meat is away from you. Put the string over the front of your hand. This time you then turn your hand to the front. So you turn your hand to the front and it gives you a loop. That loop then goes underneath the meat and again, about the same distance, about a half an inch from the, from the last piece of string. And you pull it back, hold on to the end of the first piece of string, and just pull it tight. And you just keep doing that all the way. Generally, when you get a piece of meat that's, uh, that's, that's very marbled, it tends to be uh, grain-fed. Um, when you get meat that's not quite as heavily marbled, it tends then uh, to be grass-fed. Um, for me, the, 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 the grain fed is great, it gives you a nice marbling, it gets that basting through the meat. But when you, when you go out into a field and you look at the grass and you actually get down into the shrubs of the grass, you've got tons of, of herbs and lots of clover and yarrow and things like that that you get growing in the grass in the meadows, which all go to give the flavour to the, to the protein. So for me, I, I tend to veer towards the, the grass fed personally. Now once I've got to this point and I've got all of my nice lines of string across there, what I'm gonna do is turn the meat back over. Then all you do from here is you, you have the string coming towards you, but then you're gonna loop the string back through each of the cross sections of string. So that goes along there and tie it again. So I'll, I'll cook this um, for about two and a half hours on 140 degrees and then right at the very end I whack the temperature up to about 190 to 200 degrees for the last five to ten minutes just to get that real roast caramelization on the flesh and on the on the on the fat I'll then take it out of the oven and I'll let it rest for, for, for a good half an hour before I start carving it 